everybody we're going to do a tomato review today on this tomato right here and this is called the deep pink cherry tomato I received these seeds from a viewer and they wanted me to grow it out and give it a review and see what I think of it so I don't really know anything about the tomato it's just, it was just told me that they called it deep pink so that's about all I know so let's take a look at it and indeed it is quite a deep pink color now these have been ripening up for about a week and a half, two weeks, so they really got, they weren't quite this pink in the beginning, but as they ripened, they get really deep pink like this. An unusual kind of pink. It's almost red. It's not. It's like a, a very dark pink color. Here's one that gets uh, a little bit of uh, blackening on the top, as it appears, as well as it may be bicolor at times. So parts of the tomato might get a, a slight blushing on it, uh, like a lighter blushing over here, I'm sorry, like a lighter blushing. And then it might be dark on one side. You may see some blackening on the top. If you look really close, you could start to see that they're blackening. Now this, I got quite a few more out there on that plant right now. It's just these are the only ones that are ready. So it's a pretty good tomato um, as far as, uh, you know, the way it's grown and everything. So it's a very interesting variety i don't again don't know anything about it i don't know if it's a hybrid or if it's something somebody created or is it just like a uh variety that doesn't have a name you know it could be something like that but that's how i received the seeds as a deep pink so let's give you an idea of the weight Let it zero out, okay, and it's about a half of an ounce. That's not bad for a cherry. About 0.4, about a half ounce. I guess that's about average. They're all around the same size, too. They're not much bigger than what you see here. Okay, so let's, uh, let's go over there, cut it in half, and do a bricks. Cut this deep pink one up open right here. And let's see what it looks like on the inside. Pretty sure this one's going to have a nice number on the bricks. Probably going to have a good high number. I'm hoping it does. I'd be disappointed if it was lower, lower than five. I'd be very disappointed. It looks like it's going to be nice and rich, though. So let's break out the bricks. It's really juicy. That's always a good thing. Like it wet. 5.5, huh, so it's a little above. At least it's not below. Below is where it really, you know, that's where you're really not happy. Okay, let's start off with the sweetness. A little disappointed. Um, I thought it was going to be quite a sweet tomato. Apparently I was wrong on the sweetness. 25 would be average on the sweetness. This was about maybe an 18. Uh, I'd probably go 17 on the sweetness. It was um, a little disappointing. I wasn't, I, maybe it's just, I don't know. We'll see if these other tomatoes come in and will taste any better. What I will say, it does have an interesting flavor, but the sweetness was rather low. So I wasn't that high, uh, that, that impressed with the sweetness. Um, tangy part was also a little bit low, but it was, you know, it was okay. It was a little higher than the sweetness. I put the tanginess at probably somewhere around a 23 on the tanginess. It wasn't really that much higher. It was kind of low in general. The sweetness and tangy was generally pretty low. As far as the flavor of the, the, uh, the, the dominance of the tomato flavor, um, I'd probably put that, eh, I'd probably put it at five. I think it was pretty average as far as the, the uh, intensity of the flavor. Now, going over the moisture, the moisture was, I don't know, it was moist, but it was creamy, and that's one of the things that downranks a tomato for me, and so with this one, it had the moisture, it's just the, the texture was very creamy, and so the moisture, I'm just going to put at an average number, so we'll leave it at that. Uh, tardiness, there was no tardiness to it at all, so that's a zero. Undertones. Undertones really encompassed the fla whole flavor of this tomato. It really tasted like a cherry. If you've eaten a really good, ripened, well-ripened cherry, 
it tasted like that, but not as intense as a well-ripened cherry. It was very light in, in that undertone flavor. It was very light, but it was definitely there. It definitely tasted like some kind of a fruit, like a cherry or a berry of some type. It had a very interesting undertone flavor, and that undertone was pretty prominent in this variety. I would probably say that undertone was probably about a three and a half, almost even four. It really encompassed the uh, whole flavor sensation of it. That was really the highlight of this tomato is that strange cherry-like uh, undertone to it. So it had a really nice flavor. Had that had the sweetness with it, this would have been an absolutely amazing uh, review. But because it has no sweetness on it, uh, it's not going to get a good rating, unfortunately. But the undertone was high. That was about a three and a half on the undertone. It was very strong undertone type flavor um if, yeah it was like the, that was really the whole flavor of the tomato was the undertone itself it's very potent texture we're going to go with a two on a texture i was not impressed with the texture at all it was basically very creamy slightly chalky and and slightly grainy at the same time and it was just a mashy applesauce type of texture that was a dryish type of applesauce type texture and it just Turned me right off as soon as I get that mush, mashy, mish. I'm not eating mashed potatoes, I'm eating tomatoes. So this is this was just a bad experience as far as texture goes. That's a very unfortunate thing. But again, these tomatoes have been sitting out on my table for about two weeks, maybe even around two and a half weeks. They've been here for a while. So it could be that they're just so overripened that it just turned to mush. So I don't necessarily want to downrank the whole thing just based on those, those two tomatoes. I got quite a few more out there. But unfortunately, because I had a little experience, I may have to lower that number a little. Uh, production is pretty good. I'll put that at about average. We'll go five on a production. Nothing special. Uh, skins was a little on the tough side. So we're going to go a little little bit lower on the skins. We're going to go on to two on the skins. So the numbers weren't that great on the skins. So kind of lowering that, that, that rating on the skins down a little. Because they were a little tough. But then again... The whole inside was very, very soft. It was almost basically, it was, it was basically tomato sauce sitting inside that skin, basically. That's how ripe those were. So they were a little bit overripe for me. But they, this one wasn't. This one was, this was about perfect uh, texture and everything. I mean, perfect as far as that goes. It was just a creamy variety of tomato. It's very creamy. If you like creamy tomatoes, this is a tomato for you. Okay, so seeds, I'm probably going to put that at about average. You're going to get about the average amount of seeds on this. I'm probably even actually go a little bit lower. Didn't have quite as many seeds in it, so I might go like a uh, four and a half on the seeds. It was a little bit lower. It's not a heavy seed variety. It does have a good amount of flesh in it, but it's just not a super heavy seed variety. So it go slightly lower than, than average, but it's a cherry tomato, so it's going to have very close to the average amount of seeds to it. So how am I going to rank this tomato it, overall, 1 being the highest, 10 being the lowest? Well, unfortunately, because of some of these numbers that are really low on it, I can't really give it a high ranking. So I'm going to put this at probably, I'm going to put this at about a 7 on the rank, guys. I hate to do that. And, and the only reason why I'm even giving it a 7 is because the undertones had a cherry-like flavor. And if I can grow this out next year and really pick that sweetness up and tangy up, maybe it's just bad soil I got in there. I, I don't know. But we're gonna we're not gonna give up on this tomato. That that undertone, that cherry like undertone flavor was extremely interesting, very attractive flavor, guys. That that flavor is gonna drive me to try to improve this tomato because what it, what it is now is very low as far as the rating. You can see I'm telling you it's a seven. That's basically you don't buy the seed for it, basically. But you can if you want, and you want to try to improve the variety yourself, you can. But in my opinion, it's just it doesn't meet the standards of, you know, a, a tomato lover's type of tomato, really. Because of the creamy effect, the low sweetness, the tangy was kind of low. Um, the prominence of the flavor was about the only thing that was good. Moisture was about average. There was no tardiness to it. It could have used a little bit of tardiness, but... Those undertones, that's a very special thing right there. That that um, that cherry-like undertone flavor was a very weird dynamic to a tomato. I never quite tasted a tomato like that. Very strange. Very, very strange. So that's really about it, guys. Um, what I'm going to do is I'll leave whatever information I, I got when I got the tomato, whatever I can find on it, I will put in the description below and on my website. And I'll also leave a link in the description below where you can visit the webpage I'll build for it and maybe offer the seed for this. I'm not sure if I'm going to offer seed for this, but if I do, click the link in the description below. It should bring you over to that page, 
and uh, you'll be able to buy seeds there. All right, so really that's about it, guys. That was my tomato review on the deep pink cherry tomato. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.